In this video, we are going to look at the idea of sequences. So a sequence in mathematics is just going to be some list of objects, very often a list of numbers. So for example, here's a few different sequences. How about this sequence? One, two, three, four, I think you get the pattern, it would continue on like that. So in other words, it's this like infinite list. I'm claiming that this pattern carries on forever and that there's a definable pattern. Even though I haven't written it down here, you could tell me what the next one was gonna be. It's gonna be five based on the pattern that I have. There's in fact many such different examples. Uh, another one might be, how about zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and so on. Now, notice that this is different from our previous idea of a set. In a set, things like order and repetition, that those didn't matter, and that this really was just a set of two elements. But that's not what I'm talking about. A sequence is something that's got a first thing, a second thing, a third thing, and so on. And here we have a first thing, a second thing, a third thing, and it goes on forever in this kind of pattern. So my informal notion of a sequence is this infinite ordered list of mathematical objects. Note that I don't put numbers here. The objects could be all kinds of weird mathematical things, although we normally deal with numbers. So for example, I could have an ordered list of functions or an ordered list of sets or all kinds of different objects. But for the most part, we'll be dealing with an ordered list of numbers. In the previous examples, we sort of picked up the pattern of the sequence just by looking at the first couple terms. But sometimes what we do is write explicitly down what the formula for the particular sequence is gonna be. So in order to do this, I need a little bit of notation, which is the symbol A sub K. And what A sub K is gonna to refer to, this is going to be the kth term of my sequence. So is the kth term. So for example, A sub one is the first term, A sub two is the second term, and generally A sub K is the kth term. So if I want to have an explicit formula, what I need to do is I need to tell you what are all of the AKs. So I want to give as an example this. I'm going to claim that A sub K is just equal to K. Okay, so this is like the simplest one that I can imagine. So if I want to think about what this means for my sequence then, so what I'm saying is that A sub one, the first term, is just one, so that's this. And then a sub two, which is my second term, is just two. So one, two, three, four, and continues on. This is indeed just precisely the sequence that we saw before. But I can do much more interesting and convoluted ones here. So for example, how about this? I'll use bk this time, because I'm doing a, a new series, a new sequence rather. I'm gonna say it is minus one to the power of k multiplied by three k. Okay, so let's try to write out the first few terms for this uh, sequence which has been defined by an explicit formula. So the first one, if I look at the first term, is k equal to 1. So minus 1 to the k, that's going to be just a minus 1. And then 3 times 1, so the first term is going to be minus 3. And then I'm going to look at the next term, so this is k equal to 2. Now it's minus 1 squared. Minus one squared is positive one, so there's no negative sign. And then three times two is gonna be six. Okay, I'll look at my next one. Uh, minus one cubed, it's an odd power now, so this is gonna bring out a minus one. And then three times three is gonna be nine, so minus nine. So there's a couple different components to think about here. First of all, there's the K, which we've seen before. So the K sort of has like an underlying one, two, three, four. But then that one, two, three, four gets multiplied by this extra three. So one, two, three turns into three, six, nine. And then the interesting one is this minus one to the K. Because minus one to the K, it depends on whether that K is even or odd. When it's even, minus one to an even power, all of those are, e are going to be just giving out the value of one. Minus one squared is one. Minus one to the fourth is one. But if I take the minus one to an odd power, like minus one to the one, or minus one to the three, or minus one to the five, all of those are gonna give you a negative sign. 
So as my k goes up, one, two, three, four, it keeps alternating between whether it's odd or even. So I get a minus sign, and then I don't get a minus sign. Then I get a minus sign, and then I don't get a minus sign. So without even looking at it, I can look at the next one. It will go minus, no minus, minus. It's going to have no minus in the next one, and it's going to be 4 times 3, so 12. And then the next one would be minus 15, and so on. So this problem can work two different ways. I can either give you the formula and you can write down the first few terms, or I can give you the first few terms and you can write down what the formula is going to be. By the way, every sequence doesn't necessarily have a nice, explicit, closed form formula, as they say. For instance, consider the sequence which is all of the different decimals of pi. Pi is an irrational number. It goes on forever and it never repeats. There's no nice simple formula to tell you what the seventh power of pi. Hmm. There's no nice formula to tell you, say, the seventh decimal place of pi. So we don't have this sort of clean way with a nice cute little formula to be able to describe every sequence, but a lot of sequences can be described this way.